got a lot to read, so you don't have to stand today. Because I've got a lot to read, a lot to say. Amen. Lamentations chapter 3. I got to wondering this morning, we have been pastoring the Jesus Way Church, founded and, and started pastoring the Jesus Way Church 30 years ago. And I went back into our records and on 10 29 1993 today's the 29th 2023 I went back we have a record of every tape uh, that I've preached in the home churches uh, and on 10 29 1993 I preached a message entitled give Jesus a chance Somebody say amen. Give Jesus a chance. On 102903, I preached a message not to conform, not to be conformed, but to be willing. There's the key word. But to be willing to be transformed. Somebody say amen. That message was preached somewhere around here. I guess I was around here somewhere. On 1027, which is the same weekend in 2013, from this pulpit, I preached a message entitled, Who Can You Trust? Somebody say amen. Somebody lift your hand and say, It's hard to trust folk. Has anybody ever put your trust in folk and they let you down? Amen. Amen. So on 1029, 1993, boy, I wished you all would have been with me. Glenna and I, well, Glenna looks about the same, but I looked a lot younger. I had a lot more hair and probably was a little bit skinnier. I preached, give Jesus a chance. 102903, I preached not to be conformed, but to be willing to be transformed. And on 1027, 10 years ago, it's hard to believe, ain't it? I preached, who can you trust? 1029, 23. Amen. 30 years later. Look at Lamentations chapter 3, beginning with verse number 1. Read along with me. Jeremiah writing, these are poems, actually, poems that Jeremiah wrote. And he says, I am the man that hath seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me is he turned he turneth his hand against me all the day. Listen to Jeremiah. Boy, I've been preaching some things Jeremiah wrote, you know, about woe to the pastors and all these other things, about false teaching, false doctrine, and all the other things. But now in Lamentations, the word lamentation comes from the root word lament, which means to cry out. Somebody say amen. And we find in chapter 3 of Lamentations, um, the prophet is now crying out. Surely, verse 3 again, surely against me is he turned and he turneth his hands uh, or his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath builded against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He hath set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. And he hath made my chain heavy. Does this sound like anybody else in here been through some of these things? Also, look at verse 8. Also, when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. This is how 
Jeremiah's feeling. Amen. He hath enclosed my ways with hewn stone, and he hath made my paths crooked. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in secret places. He hath turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces, and he hath made me desolate. He hath bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. He hath caused the arrows of his quivers to enter into my reins. Look at verse 14 on. I was a derision to all my people, and their song all the day. He hath filled me with bitterness, and he hath made me drunken with wormwood. He hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones, and he hath covered me with ashes. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Somebody ought to lift your hand and say, I've felt like that before. If there's anybody underneath the sound of my voice that will not admit that there have been times in our lives, if not even today, that we feel that way, then you don't know about that song that Sister Frida sang today. Somebody shout amen. Remembering, watch this. This shows, remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Somebody ought to lift your hands and shout amen. 20 verses of scripture, Jeremiah is telling about how hard of a time that he has had. And then in verse 21, he says, I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Verse 22 said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions are fail not. Verse 23 says, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Somebody ought to slip up your hands and say it with me. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. Somebody shout amen. 21 verses or 20 verses. Jeremiah is declaring of how hard of a life that he has went through. Things that he has come out of, went through, and even at that time feels as though he's in. But from verse 21, 22, 23, we find, somebody shout amen, we find that now Jeremiah says, but wait a minute. Ha <laughs> ha, I dare somebody to lift your hand and say, the devil thought he had me, but wait a minute. Uh, that The enemy put things upon me, but wait a minute. Somebody shout amen. Something happens, something happens every morning that I wake up. There's something new. Raise your hand and say, there's something new every morning. Somebody say amen. Jeremiah, let me give you a little background and then we'll preach. Jeremiah wrote Lamentations after the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. The book describes, watch this, the book describes the humiliation and the heartache and the heartbreak and the despair that took place when the Babylonians took over and destroyed Jerusalem. 
and her people, watch this, her people following the destruction. So then uh, Jeremiah being part of that, lamentations begin to point toward the only one as we read in those last three verses. All of a sudden now the book of Lamentation gives us insight that there is only one brother heart that we can look to in our time of despair. Can, can, can somebody slip up your hands and shout amen. Chapter 3 of Lamentation describes Jeremiah. It's not talking about anybody else. He's not describing anyone else. He's describing what he is going through. Somebody shout amen. Sometimes it's easy to tell folks what others are going through. Some, uh, can, can I get some help here? But then it's uh, a, a harder thing at times when you need to describe what it is that you're faced with. Uh, somebody ought to lift your hands and say amen. Lots of times we try to hide from it. Amen. We put on a, 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 a persona that we're not in certain things. Can, can I get some help here? Uh, we try to smile when we feel like crying. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, we, 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 we try to put on a, a, a mirage to let folks think that we are, are in a place. But somebody lift your hand and say, the Lord knows when your heart is broken. The Lord knows when you're in despair. The, the Lord knows when you are feeling uh, like you've been destroyed or uh, a destruction has come upon your life. Somebody say, ma'am, we are a whole lot like Jeremiah. These are the reasons. Watch this now. These are the reasons also that Jeremiah was labeled uh, the weeping prophet. Many have said that he only wept because of the state that he saw Jerusalem in. Somebody say, man, we're talking before the Babylonians came in and destroyed Jerusalem, how they had turned their backs on God, how they had begun to worship idols and all these other things. Somebody say, man, it's one thing to warn folk, but then it's a whole nother thing when you see that they did not heed your warnings. Well, I feel like preaching this morning. Somebody shout amen. I have been preaching a long time. I, 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 uh, it was amazing to me as I went up into the tape room and looked back through the book and all of the things that I had preached over the years of warning. And there are multiplied hundreds of people that should have heeded, not to me, somebody shout amen, but to the word that was spoken. Hey, the folk that ought to be in this building building this morning that are not. Somebody shout amen. I'm not talking they're in another church or in another place. That's not what I'm saying. They are no longer even living the life that God gave them for himself. Can, can I get some help here? There are many folks that should have heeded the warning. Remember years ago, remember years ago when the Lord gave me a message at the beginning of the year and I preached that the Lord spoke and said, if we were ever going to draw nigh unto the Lord, we'd better do it. Anybody remember that? I preached that on a Sunday, and I'm telling you, within the next seven days, folks got aggravated and mad and even left the church because they stated, Brother Raven don't think we got enough of God to make it. That's not what it was. Somebody slip your hands up. Say, that's not what it was. I don't care who you are, how close to the cross that you are. I don't care if you've got the title pastor, evangelist, a, a, a prophet. I don't, it don't matter to me. It don't matter to me how many times a day you pray. Doesn't matter to me how many times a week you fast we can still draw closer under the Lord and it's going to take that raise that hand say it's going to take that to make it in these last days some of them that got mad and left now are the most unfaithful people that you've ever seen you talk to them when you meet them out and you can tell they just ain't where they need to be with the Lord they should have heeded that not my words but the word of the Lord 
somebody ought to lift your hands and shout amen. And because they don't, I can only speak for myself. Because they don't, sometimes that puts even a pressure upon me as a minister of the gospel. What am I doing wrong? Am I preaching it wrong? Am I, am I too hateful when I preach? Am I too harsh when I preach? Somebody say amen and you ride the roads and you wonder why ain't, why ain't they coming uh, to the house of God? Why are people uh, no longer serving the Lord? Did I do so? I'm telling you, I'm preaching out of my heart today that I dropped by today to tell you all I can do is be pleasing unto the Lord. Here's what Jeremiah was saying. All these things that I'm going through, all of the dark places and not the light, all the times that I feel like I'm hemmed in, all of the times that it feels like I'm boxed in, oh, it might get to me for a few minutes, but wait a minute. I wake up in the morning and I find the mercies of God are brand new. Somebody ought to slip up that hand and shout amen. In the morning when I wake up, it won't be what I'm going through today, but God sustain me from what it was I was faced with yesterday and has given me a new mercy and compassion upon me today. Somebody say amen. We think we go through things. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet through all is also arrested, thrown into prison. All because they wanted to show that this man that talked about this great God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was not a prophet. Whew. We think we've been through some things, and we have. The difference, can I say some things this morning? The difference between us and a Jehoshaphat or a, a, a Jeremiah is simply who we turn to. I'm getting quiet in here. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Sister Hart came limping into the Fuller Peary building one night, limping away, and I thought she had hurt her foot. I said, Sister Hart, are you all right? What would you do to your foot? She said, oh, nothing. You just stepped all over them last night. Somebody lift your hand and say, we need to be told. Can, can, can I get some help here? We need to be told. Uh, the difference between us and Jeremiah, the world today, when they go through certain trials and tribulations and troubles, they seem to turn to certain things that should be the farthest thing from their mind. Uh, can, can I get some help here? Uh, it is a multiplied billions, uh, not billion, billions of do trillions of dollar industry in our world. It is called the world of alcohol. Uh, can I get some help here? Uh, somebody ought to lift your hands and shout amen. The Kentucky Wildcats yesterday evening were beaten by the Tennessee Volunteers. I hate to get beat by especially the Tennessee Volunteers. That ugly orange just burns something into my fleshly mind. Their colors, I just despise that ugly orange and the big T on their helmets or on their jerseys. Amen. I was reading, however, when some of the fans begin to describe the beating, amen, from yesterday, that many of them decided that it would be now good to go and get loaded up on Kentucky bourbon. 
Ain't nobody want to hear me. Boy, like that's going to help anything. So, so the same bunch before the game held hands and prayed for God to allow Kentucky to win the ball game. Uh, that's silly, too. Somebody raise your hand and say, that's silly, too. If, if our God ain't got enough to worry about, then a ball game. <laughs> Somebody ought to slip your hands up and say, let him preach a few minutes. It is amazing to me when people get in despair, when they start fighting depression or uh, fighting certain things that comes against their natural selves, uh, that one of the first things that they run to is uh, alcohol. Amen. Before you get all upset, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning alcohol, but I'm mentioning it this way they run to sin uh, can i get some help here uh, as soon as a young couple well i'm gonna preach now as soon as a young couple gets married in one of their first little spats one or the other or both of them begin to think about the old boyfriend or the new uh, or the old girlfriend and they think if i could get to them things would be all right yeah, yeah, it ain't gonna help your matter Somebody slip your hands up and say, it don't help you matter. Amen. Instead of running to the thing that is the only thing that can help us in the time of trial. Well, I, I dare somebody to lift your hands right now and say, let him preach a few minutes. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. I have uh, witnessed and I have uh, uh, counseled many a people. And they, they will tell me, well, I've done this and I've done that. And I will say, why did you do that? Because uh, I felt in such a manner that I needed to run to something. And when you run to sin, somebody lift your hand. Say, when you run to sin, uh, uh, it will take you further then you want to go. Can, 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 somebody ought to slip up your hands. It'll take you further than, want, uh, than you want to go. Amen. It will pile things up on you. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. So, 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 somebody that knows anything about dishes, raise your hand. You know what I'm talking about? Dishes, I ain't talking about buying them. I'm talking about washing them. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Oh, Lord. The, the greatest thing they say that happens in a household, uh, the most uh, uh, run uh, uh, um, appliance that is run in a household uh, is a washer. <laughs> All the women that do the wash shout amen. Seems like you, you wash some, dry some, fold some, and then have to go back and dry some and then wash some more and constantly. Somebody say amen. Well, let's talk about the laundry and let's talk about dishes. If you don't wash them as you go, what do they do? Oh, now I've got somebody listening to it. I got some spiritual folk, amen, at my 11 o'clock crowd on, in Belfry on Sunday morning, the 29th day of October. Somebody lift your hands and say, if you don't wash them, they pile up, amen. The dishwasher, you say, well, I'll hide them in the dishwasher. The dishwasher can only hold so much. If you let the laundry go four or five days, what happens? Ah, uh, can I? Does anybody in here let laundry go four or five days? Uh, uh, somebody said, "Nah, when you're an empty nester, it ain't too bad." Uh, uh, Glenna Glen hollers at me. He said, uh, well, well, "How's them clothes already dirty?" He, he ain't talking about the grandkids. Uh, ain't talking about nobody else. Uh, she always blamed it. You, you know what I have found out since being married? Uh, I'm the only one in the house uh, that dirties a lot of clothes. <laughs> Can I get some help here? I'm the only one, that, amen. Uh, of course, me and Emily. Me and Emily are the only ones that dirty plates, amen. Oh, but if you don't take care of it in the right way, it'll pile up in the spiritual realm. I dare somebody to lift your hand and say, uh, depression and heartache and heartbreak, those are of the spiritual realm. Has anybody got me? The devil will try to pile those things upon you. And if you don't take care
care of them when they're uh, uh, first noticeable. Uh, I'm telling you, it will pile up and pile up. Uh, and here's what people do. When they get to a certain place with uh, pressure, they start running to everything else. Uh, can I get, they, they try to run to a, 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 a person, try to run to a new relationship, uh, try to run to money, try to buy something. I couldn't tell you how many people tell me they, they have a, 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 a buying habit. Uh, uh, they, they've got to buy and buy and buy. I say, why do you find yourself having to buy? They say, it helps me. Helps me deal with my depression. Uh, that ain't going to help you deal with your depression. If all you do is sit in front of QVC and buy and buy and buy, you think about being depressed uh, at the end of the month when your credit card bill uh, comes in. Can I get somebody to lift your hands uh, and say, who do you run to? Uh, I dropped by today to tell you I cannot promise you I will not promise you that you won't have troubles and trials I will not promise you that you won't have times of loneliness I will not promise you that the devil won't try to pile up depression upon you but I will promise you that the Lord said if you're heavy laden if you'll come unto me he said I I will give you rest. Amen. Shout amen. amen. Some folks running to the wrong thing. Preach, Brother Raven. They run to all the things that the devil offers. And if you think for a minute, if the devil makes it available, ain't nobody want to hear me. If the devil makes it available. See, here's where we're at. October 29th, 2023. Before I walked down here on my streaming news, on my little television in my office, Benjamin Netanyahu was declaring that in Gaza they have now invaded with tanks, foot soldiers. It's going to be intensified. Hamas, the enemy, their bunker and their headquarters is located beneath a hospital hiding from Israel. We got folks in the United States. They shut down the roads in New York City yesterday afternoon. Bridges coming in from Long Island into New York City. Bridges coming from New Jersey into New York they shut them all down with all of them folk protesting Israel. Preaching now. Our public politicians in every state and in the federal government. One was on the news channel the other night and somebody said that Hamas and this thing that happened three weeks ago was Israel's 9-11. And a woman politician broke in and said, every day is 9-11 for Gaza. You don't think we're in the end. And you don't believe that these are the final preparations of his coming. And in the midst of it, the devil trying to put more and more and more pressures. You cannot get somebody. The other morning, I was between a quarter of a tank and empty. I was up at 4.30, leaving to go to the YMCA. I said, I need gas. I pulled down the road by Walmart, and Walmart's gas went up 25 cents overnight. 
I rode on down in Food City was 25 cents less only because they had not opened yet. You ain't never seen somebody pull in to get gas like I did. Praying somebody wasn't in the building getting ready to push. I wish I could get some help. Somebody slip your hands up and say, pressure. Raise your hands and say, economic pressure. Oh, I will. Grandma told me on my way out of here yesterday, we need a gallon of milk. You buy bought a gallon of milk lately. Took me 10 minutes to get a gallon because a lady was working in the milk section and she was standing right in front of, well, if you want to call it milk. Glenna says we have to drink it. That's the other thing I found out after I got married. I can only drink the kind of milk Glenna drinks. And we're one stage away from watery skim. She was standing in the spot with 1%. I can't understand if you get whole milk or 1% milk, it costs the same. Ain't nobody want to hear me. If that ain't enough, I realized we were almost out of coffee and I had to buy a box of coffee. I don't know what a whole lot of folk gonna do when they can't buy no coffee. Ain't nobody want to hear me. Box of coffee, a gallon of milk, a half a gallon of chocolate milk. Four banana nut muffins. Four blueberry muffins. And I walked by this aisle and they had them tin cans. What they called grandma, tell them out loud. What's in them tin cans? Huh? Christmas butter cookies. Grandma loves butter cookies with her coffee in the morning. Two cans. I never buy one. Went up to the cash register, Letha. Fifty-four dollars. Me and Glenna first got married 38 years ago. Fifty-four dollars would have fed us three meals a day for two weeks. That would have been a lot of Chef Boyardee. It would have been a whole lot of hamburger helper. But we never went hungry. Ain't nobody want to hear me. $12 would fill up a vehicle with gas. And you could ride two weeks on a tank. Pressure. I wish somebody would look at your neighbor and say, pressure. Your electric bill has went up. Your water bill has went up. Interest rates have went up. The bank sends me notices all the time. Refinance, refinance, refinance. I think they think I'm ignorant. My interest rate is 2.9%. And they want me to refinance at 85 I wish somebody just slip your hands up and say, pressure. And won't the devil make that look good? I got a family member that back in the day refinanced their house three times and lost two. The devil will make things look so good. I wish I could get some help. And folk will run to other things than what they need to to relieve the pressure. 
Has anybody got any pressure on them here tonight or today? So if you got some pressure on you, lift your hands and shout amen. There's pressure on us all, no matter what it is. Pressure to make the right decision. Pressure to keep the house going. Pressure for this. Pressure for that. When in reality, Jeremiah gives us the key. If you can make it through whatever it is that you're going through today, you'll wake up in the morning with brand new mercies. Somebody ought to lift your hand and say new every morning. That does not mean that you will not fight and go through certain things tomorrow. But if his mercies were new this morning, somebody lift your hand and say, I woke up. Hallelujah. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, some folks didn't wake up this morning. Raise your hand and say, but I did. I was faced with some things yesterday, but he gave me a night's sleep. And I woke up 6.30 this morning with a new mercy. Whew. Somebody lift your hand and say, his mercies endureth forever. And they are renewed every single morning. Uh, somebody lift your hands and shout amen. I, I am reminded of the little story of the little widow woman with one son. And the prophet came by and said, make me a cake. And she said, I, I got just enough oil and enough uh, uh, meal to make one cake. And me and my son, we're going to uh, uh, make this cake, eat it, and then we're going to die. And the prophet said, I said, make me a cake. And she obeyed the voice of the prophet. Somebody shout amen. I know there are some churches, Brother Hart, that preach that her that her meal barrel was overflowing. Overflowing and she received many other meal barrels that were over. I don't believe that. I just believe that every single morning when that little woman got up, there was just enough in that one meal barrel to meet her needs. Somebody shout hallelujah. His mercy are new to us every morning. You ought to start praying for your youngins. You may not see it today, but in the morning, I pray that a new mercy comes your way and it opens up your eyes. Somebody lift you up. We need to start teaching our grandchildren and our children and our families. Somebody say amen. That you may think that it's over now because of what's happened today, but if you'll go to bed tonight and give God honor that he was even with you in the furnace of fire in the morning you don't even know what you're going to be faced with but you can raise your hands and you can declare I've got something brand new through God this morning raise that hand and say no somebody raise your hand again and say no every Morning. Ah. Mm. Oh, my mama was alive. I'd come to her house, stay all night, and I slept in a room that was connected to the kitchen. Every single morning when I was there. I would be awakened at 15 after 7 or 7.30 with the aroma. A breakfast. Fresh biscuit. Fresh gravy. Fresh cooked eggs. Fresh sausage. Fresh bacon, fresh chicken legs, <laughs> my favorite for breakfast. Somebody said, I love steak and eggs. You ain't never had a fried chicken leg with gravy. Every now and then I get glenn of the fried chicken and make me some 
breakfast gravy. Mm. Every morning, it was always the same, something fresh cooked. During the day, she would wrap it up, if there was any left, in aluminum foil. Turn the oven on real low. Place it in the oven. I don't know how in the world it stayed as fresh as it did. My mom had a way. At one o'clock, if you wanted a biscuit, you could go in, get yourself a biscuit, cut it open, and place yourself a piece of pork chop. Ain't nobody want to hear me. And it was good. Wasn't it good, Grandma? Oh, it was good. I had some boys that traveled with me playing music one time. They were all greenhorns. I mean, they were old high buckeyes. They, they didn't know nothing. And they, I piled them in the floors at my mom's house. And the next morning, they woke up to all of that breakfast. And somebody said, what is that? And my mom said, that's fried apples. Oh, anybody like fried apples for breakfast? Oh, my, my. The day would get done. Nighttime would come. Off to bed, me and my ma would go. Only for the next morning to have fresh. I don't think anybody's hearing me tonight, today. You don't have to bank on God's mercy that you had yesterday. You don't have to bank on God's blessings that you had yesterday. Even some of us walked right by his mercies yesterday. So he, this morning, will not withhold. He's got brand new. I wish somebody, God Almighty Jesus. Mm. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, even when I was a rotten scoundrel, you was faithful. My mama and my daddy prayed over me. And when I didn't deserve mercy, you gave it to me. You showed it to me. I, can, can I get somebody to lift your hands and shout hallelujah? When, when, when I was rebellious, you still showed mercy toward me. You, show, you, you, you saw what I could be and not what I wasn't. Amen. Somebody ought to lift your hands right now and praise God that he saw what you could be and not what you wasn't at that time. We don't recognize it. Somebody lift your hands and say, we don't recognize it a lot. We don't recognize at times that God has got a protective hand on us, especially when we're not living for him, especially when we're not saved and we're not living the life of a child of God. We, we don't recognize that. But if we've had any kind of teaching, there soon comes a day and a time that you are faced at a fork in the road. Somebody shout amen. And I tell you, God will remind you. He will remind you what he's done for you in the past. Somebody shout amen. Did, did he do it for you? You grew up in Sunday school. You grew up in a Christian home. You grew up with knowing the truth, but you strayed away from it. You got depressed. You got this. You got that troubles and trials upon you. But soon one day came and you was at a fork in the road. And God reminded you. Je uh, 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 Jeremiah said it right here in these scriptures. I was reminded. Somebody ought to slip up your hands right here in Belfry, Kentucky and say the Lord has reminded me. When I was sick, he reminded how he healed me. Uh, when I was lost, he reminded how he saved me. When I was undone, he, sh he reminded me of how he kept me, fed me, clothed me, watched over me, protected me. Somebody ought to raise that hand and give God some praise because every day, every day, he has been faithful Amen. and has shown us new mercy.
Then the last line. Jeremiah says, not speaking to us, not even thinking about all the other things that he's already brought out in the open. He just says four words. Great is thy faithfulness. I wish I'd have researched it today. I have, I have ways to research, but there is a hymn written in our, I believe it's in our red back hymnals. Grandma, you can look it up and make sure that I'm telling it correctly, but there is a hymn or a song that was pinned to paper by some author, and he wrote it just like that. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Some of you wouldn't be here this morning. Some of you would have never made it to church this morning. Except great was his faithfulness. Some of you better get your eyes back on the prize instead of what you think will help you. But you're going to find out everything ain't faithful. Ain't nobody wanting to hear me. Crushing up them pills, snorting them up your nose. You're going to find out how faithful that will be. Filling yourself up with wine and beer and whiskey, you're going to find out it ain't faithful. You know what faithful is? Faithful is no matter where you are, it watches out for you. All the other things, even the lust of the flesh, will take you so far into deeper unsatisfaction. Ain't nobody want to hear me. Somebody lift them hands and shout, hey, man, something wrong. Watch this, something wrong. I was telling the church in Huntington the other night, here, here, here's a good example. A little child comes and brings an animal and shows you how it's made that animal suffer. You better watch that child. Amen. Amen. Somebody lift your hand and say, if you're going to kill it, eat it. And nothing wrong with killing something to eat. But there's something bad wrong when you see folk that like to make things suffer. Amen. The little child gets that in its head from somewhere. Somebody ought to lift your hands and say, let him preach a couple more minutes. Uh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, it gets in there somehow. Might be the movies they let him watch. Gets a hold of them, a spirit. And before you know it, before you know it, they're calling it mental illness, but you're walking around with a submachine gun shooting 18 people down. And then before you know it, a few days later, they're finding you dead with a self-inflicted gun shot in a trailer. And nobody want them to hear me. Last night in Indianapolis, a man, I believe it was a man, began to shoot. In every state of our union, including the Kentucky state that we're in now and West Virginia, Virginia, on a daily basis, someone is murdered by some act of evil. Drugs has caused so much evil. The money. Somebody. 
One man who is very political asked me one day, he said, what is your opinion, preacher, on legalizing marijuana? And I said, well, I don't know why you're asking a preacher, but if you're asking Raven, you, you want to see civil unrest. Start selling it legally. You're going to run a whole lot of folk in eastern Kentucky out of business. Amen. That don't pay no taxes. Yep. Well, that's a good preacher. No different than when they started selling whiskey yep. and putting a tax. Amen. And folk down here were running bootleg. Look what it's caused. Amen. It ain't faithful. It's faithful to do this, take you deeper. Destroy your life. Split up your home. Cause your kids to follow in your footsteps. But if you want faithfulness, slip up that hand and say, there's only one place that you can go to the hand of God. Jeremiah said in verse 24, The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Yes, Last night preaching on the subject prophesy against out of Ezekiel chapter 13 verses 1 through 3. We were told by the word, you better prophesy against false hope. Amen. Psalm 119, verse 114, Thou art my hiding place, David said, and my shield. I hope in thy word. Psalm 119, verse 16, or 116, up, or maybe 16, you can... Check me on that. Uphold me according unto thy word that I may live. And let me not be ashamed of my hope. Amen. My hope ain't in the things of this world. No. No. Jeremiah said, the Lord is my portion. Amen. Saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. Verse 25 says, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. Somebody ought to lift your hands up and say, I want the Lord to be good to me. If everybody else is bad to me, as long as the Lord is good to me, am I preaching or not? Somebody, somebody slip up your hands and say, as long as he's good to me. And he'll be good to me as long as I'm faithful to him. All my life, you have been faithful. Lord, am I glad Sister Frida and Sister Sandy showed up today. All my life. He has been so, so good. I'm closing. Some folks underneath the sound of my voice, whether in this building or watching, I'm telling you, sometimes you need to take inventory and think. Thank God he put me where I am. Amen. Amen. So, 
some folk could be in some bad places right now. But the Lord called you into where you are. Your family brought you here. Your mommy, your daddy. Somebody help me. A lot of things we ought to be thankful for. We don't even think about. But the Lord was faithful. As long as he's good to me. I'm going to make it. Somebody slip up your hands and say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be an overcomer. Not because of my goodness. Not because of who I am. Not because of what I am. Not because of my righteousness. Can I get some help? Amen. Not because of my abilities, but because of his faithfulness. Amen. Lift your hands all over this building. Come on. Come on, raise them hands. Lord, I thank you. I want to take just a moment. Raise that hand. Raise your hand. Lord, I praise you.